Okay, so in this clip we're going to look at monic polynomials, and a monic polynomial is just one whose highest degree term has coefficient 1. So there's actually really nothing interesting about this. It's just, um, it's just a handy way to normalize. It's just like saying, hey, if we're going to deal with eigenvectors, let's take an eigenvector that's a unit vector, because um, it'll make life easier when we do something later. Um, well, for us, we're interested in pointing out like sort of a standard representative, like a, a nice, so this is just a nice normalization. Like if we had, suppose we were looking at like the characteristic polynomial of some operator T, right? And so this thing has got some representation as A0 plus A1Z plus um, up to ANZ to the N. And it's also got some representation as C0, uh, Z minus lambda 1, Z minus lambda 2, Z minus lambda N, where those are not distinct eigenvalues necessarily. That's all the eigenvalues. Yeah. Okay. So then you can do things like, okay, well, how, uh, if, if we wanted to have sort of like, since we're in... Uh, a vector space and so you're allowed to take any scalar multiple of uh, an element and it's still in the vector space what's sort of the the standard canonical thing to do well you could say something like hey I know let's divide by a1 or sorry a0 right and so then this one if you evaluate it at 0 you get 1 right so you can say oh Let's, def let's uh, take the representative of a polynomial that um, satisfies the property that it's 1 at 0. But then what do you do if a0 is 0? Well, then you're in trouble, right? So you can't do that. Okay, so, so <clears throat> that might not be the best way to try and come up with a standard normalization. But if I went with 1 over a n, where n is the degree, then it's, um, it's, uh, it's the degree coefficient of the term of highest degree is going to be non-zero by the definition of degree because the degree is the exponent with the the highest exponent whose coefficient is non-zero that's the definition of it right so we can always divide by the top one so this this is like uh one over a sub degree p of the polynomial right okay so so this one is always going to be monic and then there's other things that you could do like looking at the factorized version of the polynomial right here you could say oh let's uh, multiply by a constant so that uh, say like 1 over c0 here so that the coefficient out in front is equal to 1 so like 1 over c0 um, chi t and then so if you look at it, that's going to give you a monic polynomial as well. Because the only way that we, like the, the highest term, highest degree term here, is the one where you pick a z from the first quantity times the z from the second quantity times, and in your product, each time, you make the choice of pick the z, not the lambda. That's how you get the highest order term. And then c0 is going to be multiplied against that. So if we divide by c0, like here, then we're going to get something that's monic as well. So turns out these are the same thing. But that's not immediately clear. But we have the following definition. So for an operator T, the minimal polynomial of t is the unique monic polynomial. See, if I didn't have the word uh, monic in there, then, then there'd be no way to get uniqueness. It's the unique monic polynomial, and we'll call it pt, so it's a polynomial, um, of minimal degree
which satisfies PT of T equals zero. Okay. And so then the question is, is this a well-defined thing? How do you know that there exists a unique minimal thing that fits the bill? Well, that's our theorem. And so the theorem says that if we have an operator T, then there exists a unique monic polynomial of minimal degree for which P of T is the zero operator. Okay. So that's just saying that the definition is well, well defined. Okay. And so for the proof of this guy, let's see. So for the existence part, um, <clears throat> let's take ZT to be the collection of all polynomials um, such that P of T is equal to zero and which are monic. Okay, so now this ZT set, this set, ZT of polynomials is non-empty by the Cayley Hamilton theorem. And so that's just, as we pointed out just a, a moment before, 1 over a n chi t is, is an element of this set, right? So it's monic and uh, it kills t or T kills it, depending, I guess, on how you want to think about that. Okay, and then since the degree of P has to be at least one, because we're talking about uh, vector spaces, which are at least one dimensional, um, then we can choose um, <clears throat> an element P with the degree of P minimal. So in other words, that it's a non-empty set and the options for its degree are one or two or three or four or da 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 up to some fixed finite N. And so amongst those possibilities, there's just a finite number of them. So there has to be a minimal one. So pick it. Uh, and then since it's in there, that since the polynomial is in there, then uh, in ZT, then that means that it's going to have that corresponding degree. So, so when I say uh, the degree of P is minimal, what I mean is that if, uh, say we call it M, then what that means is that if uh, degree Q is strictly less than M, then Q of T cannot be zero. Okay, that's the notion of minimality that we've got here. Um, okay, so now we do uniqueness. So there's definitely one in there of minimal degree. How is there not more than one? Well, if Q is also in here, and it has degree M, Then when you look at the difference, Q minus P, uh, well, that's a difference of zeros. So that's gonna give you zero as well. And then notice that um, the degree of Q minus P has to be strictly less than M. And that's because the, the uh, top term for Q is Zn because it's monic and the top term for P is Zn because it's monic. So when you look at the top terms and you take the difference, you get zero. 
And so that implies that the degree of uh, Q minus P is, oh, I guess those were M's, sorry, fix that. Z to the M and Z to the M. That has to be strictly less than M because the Z to the M terms got canceled off. So um, this handy fact happens since both are monic. So this is another nice reason for normalizing with this sort of standard choice of monicness. Okay, um, but then that's that's a contradiction, right? So by what we know over here, that can't happen. This this can't happen right here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So P has to equal Q. Okay, now, if you've looked at the book, uh, you've noticed that the proof of this theorem in the book is like a page long. And here I did it in four short lines. So, I was cheating. How'd I cheat? See if you can figure it out before finding the answer in the next clip.